games. 150 days of games. He's cleverer than I thought. Clever. The whole of Rome would be laughing at him. They weren't so afraid of his Praetorian. Fear and wonder. Powerful combination. You really think the people are going to be seduced by that? I think he knows what Rome is. Rome is the mob. He'll conjure magic for them and they'll be distracted. He'll take away their freedom and still they'll roar. The beating heart of Rome is not the marble of the Senate. It's the sand of the Colosseum. He'll bring them death. And they will love him for it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I I'm sorry, brethren, to um, subject you to that video that you have seen. Um, but it's very meat, very pertinent onto what I would like us to discuss and consider today. And that is distraction. I've used that. That was from the movie Gladiator. And I've used that in several videos because it's so meat. It's so pertinent, you know. <laughs> Whatever your country is, America. America is the mob. Conjure magic for us and we will be distracted. Take away their freedom. Who does that? The Jesuits. Take away their freedom. Instill their war. Instill their entertainment. Instill their news. Instill their religious feel-good stuff. And they will be distracted. The bleeding heart, or the beating heart, I should say, of America is not the marvel of the White House. Oh, God forbid, no. But the content of the Jesuit-controlled media. They will give you death, and you will love them for it. See how that works? Very pertinent. And see, that's what Satan does so well. He distracts you. He distracts people. Look at what's going on with Putin. Okay, Putin. All right? I know I, some of the videos that I've seen or looked at, um, you know, like that one um, Ukrainian guy sitting there just bawling in the car crying. It's, it's gut-wrenching stuff. And yes, tragedies are being wrought because of that. But see, these sinister Jesuits have done that purposely as a means of distraction to get everyone's attention focused on this. And see, that's what they do. They want to draw your attention away from truth. And see, while the Jesuits want you to pay attention to this, what's going on with Putin? Oh, what's going on underneath? You know? Have you forgotten, by the way, that Corona going to get you? Have you forgotten that? Huh? What happens when they bring it back up in full force again? You think this is done with, huh? You think this is over with? It ain't, it ain't over with, brethren. It's just starting. It's not going away. They can't. They can't let it go away. Okay? But I, I pray you. When the world, when the Christians, when even the King James Bible-believing Christians out there want you to pay attention to point A, always seek what's going on at point C. What are they doing? What are they doing? Because, see, distraction is one of Satan's greatest weapons among many of his weapons that he has. Distraction is one of the best that he employs. See, get you distracted. Get your eyes off of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And get you distracted with little sidebars. Little things, little whatevers. Okay? And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Hmm. And no marvel that his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. And all the while, distracting you. And these ministers of righteousness, of course, these Christians, doctors, 
the cele Jesuit celebrities and stuff like that. Oh yeah, ministers of righteousness. See distraction. And with these distractions, what happens? Confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, is he? Is he? That's what we're going to be talking about, these distractions again. We've, we've talked about this before. But it's, it's, it's very me, very pertinent for right now, brethren. You need to beware of these things. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Matthew chapter 13. We're going to be reading verses 24 on to verse 30 to start. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at what we are looking at today, okay? Please follow me along. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 on to verse 30. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, right away, we got to mention this. Doctrinally, this is not written for us today in this dispensation. Okay? This is not written for us of the church of the living God. It's why? Because, it's made, because he makes mention of the kingdom of heaven. Church of the living God, you have to remember, there are those who watch who are not of us. So these, this has to be very quickly expounded on, okay? So bear with me. The kingdom of heaven, you might have also heard called the millennial kingdom. Find the word millennial for me in scripture and we'll talk, okay? But the kingdom of heaven is the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ with us, the church of the living God and those who make it through the time of Jacob's trouble, which they call the great tribulation, okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. The kingdom of heaven is the literal 1,000-year rule and reign of our Lord Jesus Christ from Jerusalem. Hence, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are two different things. The kingdom of God can be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, but more often than not, the kingdom of God is reference unto the spiritual kingdom, not the actual physical, literal kingdom. Okay? So you have to keep that in mind. So right away... Doctrinally and dispensationally, what we are looking at doctrinally is not for us, okay? This is for future things, okay? Not written to us, but it is to instruct us, absolutely. Because at this time, Jesus Christ had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day, according to the scriptures. The law was still binding because the perfect sacrifice had yet to be paid, okay? So you have to remember that, but we can sure learn something here, okay? Let's continue. Church of the living God, brethren, I, I, have to, I have to say that, okay? Because there are those who are not of us who watch, okay? So keep in mind. Let's continue. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But while men slept, Slept, sleep. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Come on, fingers, work with me. Proverbs chapter 6. Verses 9 on to verse 11. Huh, there's, there's a, another significant number to the Jesuit. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt, thou, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Have you been lulled to sleep? Have you been lulled to sleep by things in the media, by what you hear? Have you been lulled to sleep by these Christians speaking smooth things unto you, prophesying deceits? Have you been put to sleep by those boasting their accomplishments? When are you going to wake up? When are you going to wake up? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty, poverty, come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Now, poverty there can be taken two ways. 
literal poverty, having no sustenance or anything, or a spiritual poverty? Which one is it? Which one is it? Remember that Satan's ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Are you being made vain by what you are deciding to follow after? And on that, Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 on to verse 7. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that Cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt. Of course, Egypt in type for us, for our instruction, is a type of that, the world, okay? And have not asked at my mouth. Worldling. How, how many of you, when you have a question, seek the Lord? To answer these questions. Or do you go to like a commentary or something? Or do you go to seek a video? How many of you actually wrestle with the question before our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father? How, how many of you do that? Hmm? Yes, woe to the rebellion, rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth, to strengthen, them, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, okay, and type for us, type of Satan, who is the little g-god of this world, who's willing and more than ready to give you anything, to bowl you over, to lull you to see, uh, sleep, to itch your ears, to speak unto you smooth things, to prophesy deceits, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. When you don't seek the Lord Jesus Christ, but are dependent upon man and upon things of the world, it reaps confusion. Confusion. And who is the author of confusion? It's not God. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. Hmm. His ambassadors. Whose ambassadors? Pharaoh's ambassadors. Ambassadors of Egypt, ministers of righteousness. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be and help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, which is what you're going to have, trouble and anguish. When you take your eyes off, of what the Lord is doing, but rather want to be distracted, okay? From whence come the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent? They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit, profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Their strength is to sit still. And what do they do in that sitting still? In that strength of theirs of just to sit still. This is not where our Lord, you know, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. No. What do these people do while they're sitting still? Back to Matthew chapter 13. Let's read verse 25 again. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares. Hmm. Ezra. Ezra. 
Ezra chapter 4. If you do not know where Ezra is, Ezra is right after the book of 2 Chronicles. Ezra is before Nehemiah. Nehemiah is before Esther. Esther is for, before Job. Job is before the Psalms, okay? You find the Psalms, turn your scriptures, turn your pages toward your right, okay? But Ezra chapter 4, Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 5. Check this out. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. So these enemies whose strength is to sit still, okay, um, when they see work of the Lord being done by his ministers, work of the Lord being done in witnessing unto the lost, um, uh, edifying, encouraging the church of the living God, okay, the body of Christ. When the adversaries see this, okay, okay, the adversaries. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also to distract you. Let's go back to uh, Ezra chapter 4, verse 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel. Who? These adversaries. Zerubbabel, the one who is uh, in charge, doing the stuff for the Lord, you know, stuff like that. And to the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Azar Hidon, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. Hmm. We're, we're Christians like you. We seek your God just like you do. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So, and I see this quite often. Um, you know, the Lord will give you something to speak about, to speak truth unto the congregation of the Lord or whatever it is, uh, whatever you're doing, whatever the Lord has called you on to, there's always a tear around there, somewhere in the vicinity. That rises itself up to contradict exactly what the Lord is saying through you or doing through you. Isn't that so, huh? Yeah, isn't that so? And all the while, we're, we're like you, but we see a problem here. Or this, that, or the other thing to distract you. See, distract you. Look at the response by Zerubbabel. And we gave subjection to them. No, not for an hour. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. You have nothing to do with our God. You're not saved. You're lost. Go away. Get thee hence. Okay? And what? how do they react? Their strength is to sit still. Okay? Then the people of the land weakened the hands of of the people of Judah and troubled them in building by smear campaigns, gossip, whispers. Okay? And verse 5. Is that what we were? Yes, we were to read to verse 5. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Mm. So back to Matthew chapter 13, verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Is that not what they're doing right now? Hmm? These tares amongst the wheat. 
So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence hath it from whence then hath the tares? See, these tares that come up, we we see God just like you. And then, then they get discovered. It's like, no, you don't. You, no, you're not. You, you're not even saved. You're an infiltrator. You're a coadjutor. Okay? You're a hireling. Go away. And what do they do? They sow confusion. Say, like whispers, backbitings, and all that kind of stuff. That's what they do. Okay? Smear campaigns, just like what uh, Brother Alberto Rivera mentioned about. Okay? How the Jesuits operate. Some of these people are not Jesuits, but they do uh, use Jesuit tactics. Some of them are not Jesuits yet, but want to be Jesuits. Those are, those are the worst people who have this weird fixation with Jesuits because they aspire to be one themselves. <laughs> you know. But see, because of these tares that spring up uh, with the wheat, that, and that wheat, that blade, brings forth fruit, then these tares come up. Just sitting there. Just sitting there. Barking. Okay? And that can cause confusion. Can it? We've seen that happening today, haven't we? Verse 28 now on to verse 29. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. An enemy. An enemy. Who is our enemy? Roman Catholicism, Jesuit order, yes. And who is the god of Catholicism? Satan. Satan. God only knows why some of you would want to defend Catholicism. God help you. But he said unto them, an enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Verse 29, but he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Now granted, this is future stuff, okay? We, we, we discussed this, I believe, in the, in the video the Lord had me to do called the two raptures, okay? I'll link that in the description box where we get into verse 30 especially, okay? We're not going to get into it here, but this is talking about future stuff. Remember, this is not written for us today, Okay? This is instruction, okay? But hold your place. Go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We want verses 51 on to verse 56. Luke chapter 9, verses 51 on to verse 56. Okay? Let's, let's read verses 28 and 29 again, okay? Get with this flow, shall we? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Okay. The servant said, the servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Luke chapter 9, verses 51 on to verse 56. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. I will awake and sing praise. My heart is fixed. Is your heart fixed? Hmm? Are you double-minded? Huh? Are you unstable? Huh? Is your heart fixed? Hmm? And sent messengers before his face And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Oh, and we already looked in Isaiah chapter 30 about how his ambassadors came from Hanais. So, the tares. And from whence come those tares? An enemy from Satan. Okay? Satan will send out his people while the Lord sends out his people. Hmm. You asleep? Huh? You asleep? Have you been lulled to sleep? Huh? I think you need to wake up, buddy. 
and they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? He said unto them, Matthew chapter 13, verse 28, And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Verse 55 in Luke chapter 9. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. But he said, back in Matthew chapter 13, verse 29, But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both, now, like I said, we talked about this in another video. I'm not going to get into this in this video, okay? But let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. And again, you got questions about this? I'll link that video in the description box for you to watch. Watch that, okay? But see, today, we're not building a physical kingdom, okay? And the weapons of our warfare are what? Not carnal, okay? See, kingdom, physical kingdom builders today, you know, want to build church buildings or want to set up their own little whatevers, you know, their own little petty kingdoms, that derives from Catholicism. Catholicism is building that kingdom for that man of sin, some perdition, okay? Absolutely they are. You gotta watch it for these kingdom builders, brethren, because, okay, because <laughs> we're not here to build a physical, actual kingdom, okay? We're to let them go, okay? We know that there are people out there being raped in their minds by the teachings of Catholicism and all her multitude of daughters. We know that within Christianity and in all these denominations, their little pet doctrines of men, doctrines of Catholics, have crept in and they're teaching the precepts of men little little flavorings from their Bibles. We know this. We know this. And we are to, we are to address these people, but when they will not hear, we are to what? For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Leave them alone. Go on to the next city. For they are the blind leading the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both of them are going to fall into the ditch. And you have seen, I failed at that. Okay? Fighting back. And you got to remember, we're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. We who are saved at the judgment seat of Christ. Those of you who are lost at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Okay? See, these people get fixated on men. And when you have fixations on man, that's dangerous. You're asleep. You're asleep. Whether you want to admit this or not, you've made a man an idol. Oh, I don't fall down and worship. Where do you spend a lot of your time? Hmm? What, what gravitates in your thoughts onto these people? Huh? John chapter 21, verses 19 on to verse 22. Okay, This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Our Lord kind of mocks, if you will, <laughs> uh, Peter, you know, because Peter denied him three times. And then I, he says on to Peter, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these three times? Okay. 
Then he's and then in verse eighteen he's like, verily, verily I say unto you, unto thee, you know, when you were uh, young, you go wherever you want to go, but when you're old, someone else is going to address you, and you're going to go where you don't want to go, signifying by what death he should die. Okay, verse nineteen under verse twenty-two. Okay, this spake he signifying, but what by what death he should glorify God, and when he had spoken this, he saith unto him. Follow me. Then Peter, distracted, okay? Think about it. Then Peter, turning about, okay? Turning about. Lord, here. Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? That's what John said, okay? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Note that, okay? Note this. The Lord says to Peter, after he just reaffirms three times, in the light of his three denials. It's like, Lord, you know, I love you. <laughs> you know? And Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Like, Lord, yes, I love you. <laughs> Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? I may, Lord, yes, I do. Follow me. See? That's indicative to man, unfortunately. That's the way, that's that struggle, see? That's that struggle. Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Look at how our Lord answers. Jesus saith unto him, If I will <laughs> that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Okay? Okay? Now, when it comes to heresy, when it comes to lies, yes, we are to speak truth through the scriptures and expose the heresy and lies, yes. But see, there are those out there who will be, are distracted within their walk because they keep their focus on a man or on other worldly things. Distraction. An enemy hath done this by sowing tares among the wheat. You distracted? Again, you know, brethren, I am under the uh, the belief that if there is something imperative that we really need to know about as the Church of the Living God, you bet your bottom dollar he's going to make us aware of it. Okay? I, you know, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us his word, I think he can do that. Okay? And Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 19 on to verse 20. But the angel of the Lord by night, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, okay, go stand and speak in the temple of the people all the words of this life. What life? This life in the world or this life in our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ? Ah, yeah. And notice too, let's read a little bit of context. Verse 17. On to verse 20 now. When the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. You see right there the religious uh, rulers trying to imprison those who are speaking the truth of Christ, truth of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But yet, Lord breaks them out, tells them, go, go, <laughs> stand, 
stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life, this life in Christ. Well, what about him? What about him? Who cares? You follow him. You follow him. Okay? We really need to be cautious, dear brethren, about how and what we are allowing to distract us. Okay? We really do. I know it's easy to do. It's, it's frightfully easy to do. Okay? It's frightfully easy to do. But we have to remember that. What are we allowing to distract us? And you also got to remember too, brethren, that we are not building an actual physical kingdom down here. Okay? You have to remember that. We are to go and preach all the words of this life. This life in Christ. Okay? This life in the church of the living God. Go to John chapter 18. John chapter 18, verses 36 on to verse 38. Okay? Our Lord even says this in the face of coming crucifixion. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. Meaning, okay, meaning the kingdom of heaven is not, wasn't there, okay? My kingdom is not of this world. Now, I will say, uh, we'll point to the spiritual. And yes, amen, but you got to remember what is going on here. He is the king who came offering the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom, with him as king sitting on the throne, he offered that unto the Jewish people. They rejected that, prophesied that they were going to do that. He was, he was just about to be crucified, okay? So when he says, my kingdom is not of this world, okay? His kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is not being established at this time. Obviously, was it, okay? People say, well, my kingdom is not of this world. We're going to, talking about the kingdom of God, okay, not the kingdom of heaven. And yes, amen. But what he is talking about, my kingdom is not of this world, okay? Prove it to you, okay. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Meaning it's going to be at another time. After the time of Jacob's trouble. After we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, you know? Okay? So he's telling Pilate, it's like, yeah, I'm a king. But my kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, is not yet. Okay? Because if it were, my servants would no way let this happen. But see, his kingdom, his physical kingdom, wasn't present there yet. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Pilate... Therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am, I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. And first, verse 38, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? Obviously Pilate didn't know that, did he? Because what is truth? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is truth? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, right? So obviously, Pilate didn't, didn't know what truth is, even though he was talking to the physical manifestation of truth itself. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? Shows you how blind people can be when distracted. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. A little bit of Pilate's distraction, but ye have a custom that I should release. Unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? 
Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas, or Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. And hence, with distraction, they'd rather have a thief Someone who boots the door out of the way and goes and climbs up some other way than going through the door. Oh, how many people want, will endure with someone who comes in his own name. Oh, brethren. Oh, oh, dear brethren. Oh, brethren. We have to be careful about distractions, about what we are allowing in our lives to distract us. It's really easy. And some of you might be saying, it's like, well, okay, what about Luke chapter 22, Brad? What about, the go there. Luke chapter 22. Okay, we've talked about this before, but let's go there. Luke chapter 22, verses 36 on to verse 38. Okay? Actually, we have to begin at verse 34, okay? Verse 34 on to verse 38 in Luke chapter 22. And he said, after Peter's like, although the whole world deny thee, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He did that three times, okay? Yeah. He said, and, and he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, okay, when I sent you without purse and scrip, thank you, and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Why? Because the king, as king, our Lord Jesus Christ, will able, is able to supernaturally provide for people's needs. Look at how he's fed the 5,000 and stuff like that, where they were pulling fish and bread from nothing, okay? All right? With the king present, present physically on the earth, he's going to provide for his subjects. The king who is in heaven right now provides for us in other ways, but what he is talking about when he was there physically, okay, he's, he's the king going forth to fight their battles, okay? He is their king, physically, okay? That's what he's talking about. You know, when I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? They said nothing. Then said he unto them, but now. Why the but now? Because he was going to the cross to pay for sin, okay? So the king will not physically be there any longer, but he will eventually be going back up into heaven. Okay, and hence giving out the Holy Ghost, okay? And the Lord is that Spirit, okay? Okay? But now, now that the king is going to be going away, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. <laughs> and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So we're supposed to go do battle physically. Uh, no, no. Now see, someone who wants to be a pacifist will come into this and say that we're not supposed to fight back or, any, or anything like that. And we're going to look at that in 1 Corinthians, okay? But, depraved indifference. See, that's the thing that these pacifists, uh, you know, who preach the love gospel, that's the one thing that they want, are preaching against. Self-defense, okay? Escalation of force, remember? Okay? Heresy, all right? We do not go and wage battle like the Catholics with the, the Crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. This is why Jews hate Christianity, and rightfully so. Because remember, the Crusaders with the crosses on their tunics, they're Christians. And they associate that with Christians because of Catholicism. Nowadays, same thing. Christian, they think Catholicism or they think of the ones that you see on TV. They think, Christian. Well, you mean Jesus Christ. What Jesus? Oh, the one from Catholicism? Oh, the, 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 uh, the one that you see on TV? The charismatic? Huh? The God of the Catholics? 
Okay, I, I have to steal that phrase, sorry. Uh, the God of the Methodists. The God of the Lutherans, which is the same as, as Catholicism, okay? Who is the God of Catholicism? Brad, are you saying that? Uh, I'm saying all uh, these denominations, while well, they might have started in a innocent kind of way, is Christ divided? Hmm? Hmm? Even non-denomination is a denomination in and of itself. Is Christ divided? Oh, no, but we all got to get together. Yeah. And how does everybody get together? Reject truth. Truth is what ought to bind us. And to have true unity, true unity, truth is always um, the compromise. Not with me, boy. Not with me. Ought not to be with you. Okay? But see, the pacifists will come in here and say, no, well, no, 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 no. He's talking about something else. No. Pacifists will say that we're not supposed to fight back at all. Hence, if you're being attacked by some raving lunatic, just sit there and be a doormat and not defend yourself. That's heresy. No. No. What is he talking about? Okay, Because he's not going to be on the earth as king. But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors. For the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. And remember uh, Peter, okay? When he took, off his, uh, took his sword and smote Malchus and cut off his ear. And the Lord's like, hey, hey, hey. Okay? Put your sword away. And see, again, the pacifists will come in and say, see, we're not supposed to fight back. No, 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 no. Peter went on the offensive. Okay, they were going after Jesus. Okay, he went on the offensive. Peter, like he said, like the Lord said, they were all going to scatter. But Peter wanted to show his bravado. Shh, took out the sword and ha! Difference. There's a difference in that, see, brethren. Okay? There's a big, big difference in that. Okay? We are not to take it upon ourselves physically to go and fight these wars like Catholicism does with my nation here of America. Okay? And your nation too. The Jesuits are making wars with nations. Nations as their pawns like Russia. Okay? Come on. Give me a break. But we are not to go out and start physical wars. Okay? How are we to fight? How are we to fight today in this dispensation? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And see, herein, see, there is a militancy that is associated with the church of the living God. But how often, so often, people want to confuse the physical with the spiritual. Okay? Or, or I should say the physical with the spiritual. Okay? The flesh, spirit. Fight each other, okay? But let's read. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 6. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Oh, is that... What? Oh, oh, one second, brethren, one second. <laughs> second Corinthians! <laughs> <laughs> Second Corinthians. Some of you were like, uh, Brad, I think you, yes, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Second Corinthians, chapter 10. Not First Corinthians. I wrote down that I wrote that down wrong. <laughs> Second Corinthians. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 under verse 6. Now I Paul myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. And see, a lot of religion will distract you 
and try to disguise fleshly things and call them spiritual. You see this in Christianity all about, okay? Even within King James Bible-believing Christianity, you see it, okay? Men doing things in the flesh and trying to pass them off as things done in the spirit. You see that too, okay? But we do not walk after the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a, in a readiness, readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. For example, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. Oh, I can't believe, Lord, that I let myself get distracted with that nonsense. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I repent. See, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, fleshly. And we are casting down strongholds. There are a lot of people out there, brethren, who make their own principles, their own ideas, their own little doctrines, strongholds. Mm -hmm. And we are to be armed with the sword of the Spirit. See, this, the scripture, is not a carnal weapon. This is the, this is the most powerful, mightiest weapon on earth. Okay? Some of you out there say, well, you're not going to kill someone with the, with the scriptures. Well, if you have, well, if you have a hardcover, uh, maybe, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But no, no, but this is sharper. Hebrews chapter 4, come on, come on. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You ought to know what this is, uh, you ought to know this by heart. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Joints and marrow is what? Body. So soul, spirit, and body, the whole person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? and of the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? Our weapons are not carnal. We don't go out there waging physical war. Our warfare is through the, war, uh, through the sword of the spirit. Okay? And see, pacifists will come in and say to you, don't fight at all. No, we are to fight. We are to fight the pulling down of strongholds. And how do we pull down the strongholds? We don't! We don't! That's the thing. God does through the scriptures. And see, how many preach a militancy operated through fleshly means? Oh, wow. Yeah. We have to have a war on this, war on that. Absolutely. War on religion, number one. Absolutely. But how do we fight that war? Physically put up your dukes? Oh, I know a couple of people, these infiltrators, would love to put up their dukes, wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. But no, no. We get down on our knees. Now, see, again, to speak against that satanic pacifism, you know, that doesn't mean if someone, like, if someone breaks into our little apartment that our Lord has given us, um, they're going to die. They're going to die. I'm going to shoot them. Okay? Because I have a wife to defend. Okay? And if someone breaks into our house, um, 
I know a lot of people, it's like, well, you don't, hey, if they make the decision to go and to break into someone's house, I don't know what their intent is, okay? You break into my house, my wife is in bed, and I'm working here in, in Brother Alexander's room or whatever, it, it doesn't matter. You're going to die, okay? That's just the way it is. Self-defense. Pacifists preach in praved, uh, in pra uh, depraved indifference, excuse me, which is satanic heresy. Okay? But see, when we fight against the wiles of the devil, we are fighting against strongholds, casting down imaginations. And guess what, brethren? We ain't doing it. It's the scripture. What we can do is through our example. Okay? But see, it is God working out what he has put in that is doing the fighting. Okay? So many of you, so many of us, even of the Church of the Living God, put way too much emphasis on flesh. Okay, never mind about these Catholic coadjutor devils that are all about the skin suit. They've, they've been exposed. They can't stand it. And they, just like devils, they want to bring up, uh, open up wounds, wounds, keep you here, keep you going back to tears among the weeds. Okay? Okay? So many are distracted by that flesh when the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This is the sword of the spirit. Okay? Okay? And, and remember now, see? 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 4. Okay? 1 Timothy 2, chapter, one, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 4. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All men. Okay? Now you can get into it. It's like, well, what about these guys? You know, there's uh, our Lord talks about pray not for these people. When someone has made their choice, okay, and serves Satan, okay? There are a few people, especially um, a certain individual that I don't pray for, okay? I, I, don't, I don't even pray that the Lord break him anymore because his choice has been made. He's, he's, he's going to have a lot to deal with at the uh, white throne of judgment, the great white throne of judgment, he is. But, okay, there is that. When someone has made their choice and have given themselves over onto Satan and are openly, actively, willingly serving him, yeah, there comes a point when, yes, we there are certain people we are not supposed to pray for. Absolutely. But Paul says that prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings. For all that are in authority. Why? Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Godliness being other, separate. And honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. See, we pray for those in authority that we can live a quiet and peaceable life living as examples unto the lost. Okay? Well, that's fleshly. What the Lord has put in, you are to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, not save yourself or to stay saved. What the Lord has put in himself, we are to work out in our daily lives. Okay? Verse 4, who will have, Mr. Calvin, all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants all men to be saved. Yes, he does. Mr. Calvin, God wants all men to be saved. But see, not everybody is going to be saved because our Lord has 
specific conditions to receive, you have to be broken. You have to have godly sorrow, which will come from brokenness. Godly sorrow, which comes from brokenness, will result in fear. And fear will result in you. Lord Jesus, please save me. Okay? God would have all men to be saved. Okay? Paul says to make prayers, intercessions, and giving the thanks be made for all men. Semicolon. For kings. Another verse, yes, for kings. Those who are in authority. Yes, absolutely. But are we to pray for someone who rejects Christ and has made the choice to serve Satan? No. Paul didn't. What he's talking about is, you know, for kings and for all that are in authority? Yeah. So, Brad, do you pray for Smoking Joe? No. No. I pray that the Lord have mercy that he may continue his work that he is doing through the church of the living God in this nation with whomever he's working with, okay? <laughs> working on or working through or whatever, okay? No, I don't, I don't pray for Smoking Joe. All right, and I definitely don't pray for President Kamala Harris. Why? These people are serving the Vatican, okay? They've made their choice, okay? If you're convicted about that, the most you could really do is pray that the Lord break these people. But when they obviously will not be broken like a certain individual, um, you just forget them. They're, you know, they're going to have a lot to deal with themselves at the great white throne of judgment. Okay, so let them go on, keep doing what they're doing. They're just digging their grave deeper. Okay, okay, all right. We are to pray for those who are in authority that we may live a peaceable peaceable life in all godliness being separate and honesty. <laughs> you know, I, I got to really, you know, admit to this fact that if honesty, true honesty, scriptural honesty were injected into the American way of life the system would collapse. That might be a good thing, but America has is just way too gone for that. Okay, America's days. America's days were done for when we allowed Catholicism amongst our mist, and Catholicism got in under the guise of liberty of conscience. And you know there are some out there who would defend the right of Catholic to be a Catholic as so long as he ain't hurting people. Well, to that, I go to Psalm 119. Now, those of opposing uh, faiths, okay? Uh, no, we do not go and start wars with uh, uh, Muslims. They, they do that themselves, okay? We don't do anything like that. No, no, no. No, um, I've, I've, like I said, I've talked to a few Muslims. Uh, I've, I've had conversations with Buddhists and stuff like that. No, we, we don't fight these people physically. Um, spiritually, yes, we pray, uh, pray that God open their eyes and stuff like that, yes. But, you know, we got to remember. Do you hate every false way? Go to Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Verses 97 on to verse 104. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me, the tares amongst the wheat. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, 
that I might keep thy word. You know, like we just looked at, that we may live a quiet, uh, uh, I will start butchering that. We just looked at it. And uh, where was that? Where were we in First Timothy chapter 2? Verse 4? Or uh, verse 2? First uh, Timothy 2 verse 2? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. I hate every false way. Now look, I know I know of Catholics out there that are, are praying to the cookie and think that Sosa is their God and they're, you know, they're not bothering me or anything. Then, hey, you know what? You want to put yourself in hell. You want to worship Satan. That's on you. That is your fault. Okay? I'm not going to be quiet. Okay? I'm going to warn you. I'm going to tell you, Catholic, that you're serving Satan. Okay? I'm going to tell you, Muslim, that you're serving Satan. Buddhist, I'm going to tell you that you're serving Satan. You are not serving the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I'm going to tell you why I hate every false way. Do you love them? Who hate the Lord? How do we show love today? By telling them truth. That's how you love them. That's how you love the enemy today. You tell them truth through scripture. You know? <laughs> you're, when you die, you're not going to become your own little God, Mr. Mormon, Moron, Mr. Mormon. You're not going to become your own God, ruling over a planet or whatever, and your wife going to be a spirit mama producing spirit. No, it's not the way it's going to work. Okay? <laughs> it's not the way it is. All right? I hate every false way. I hate every false way. Does that mean I hate the adherent to those false ways? No. No, I do not. Absolutely not. And neither should you. Neither should you. Pity those people, brethren. Think about these Catholics who are worshiping Satan, who will not hear the truth. Okay? Are we as the church of the living God going to... Convert or die? No. That's what they're going to do during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what they did in the Dark Ages. Ooh, we're not like that. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Okay? Pulling down strongholds. Casting down imaginations. How? Through the sword of the Spirit. The Scriptures. Okay? Okay? I hate every false way. I hate Islam. I hate Catholicism. Goes without saying. I hate Buddhism. I hate Mormonism. I hate Jehovah Witnessism. Okay? I hate these denominations. I hate every false way. Okay? Now, if you yourself personally, by your conscience, I understand. Oh, I, to I do. I, to I totally understand liberty of conscience. I really do. Okay? I do. But if you want to, in your heart, worship your little God, which is Satan, that's your problem. I'm going to inform you of your error. I'm going to inform you of your danger. Okay? Well, it's like, well, if you don't respect other people's religion, I, I'm not religious, by the way. Okay? I'm not religious. <laughs> okay? I'm not. Remember, religion has been redefined. 
Watch out for those who are redefining terms, by the way. Watch out for those people. They're dangerous, okay? Because we told true religion is doing things, right? We are told that in James, which is a book uh, for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? I'm going to tell you of your error. I'm going to tell you that you're worshiping a false god, okay? But I'm not going to forc forcibly convert you. See, I got I got to show you this, okay? I got to show you this. I recommend to you this book for you, my countrymen, okay? I recommend this book to you. I've showed this before, okay? The original 13. The 13 original states uh, in the Union, okay? This is not a this is a book that has very little opinion but all facts talks about how the um, how the 13 first 13 came into being and um, my question is when was America ever truly a godly nation I don't think it was but see some of these nations some of these countries okay some of these uh, countries didn't allow Catholicism didn't allot for Catholicism. Like our original ancestors would never have allotted for Catholicism, okay? And there are some, um, <laughs> like in Massachusetts, okay? Here, just really quickly, bear with me this rabbit trail. I'm just going to read this, okay? I'm just going to read this little por portion right here where my fingers are, okay? See, you let Catholicism, Satan in! Under the guise of liberty of conscience. And I understand it. And yeah, I agree with liberty of conscience. Absolutely. But see, when you allow the devil his footing, the tears among the wheat, what happens? Destruction. In 1691, the Plymouth Colony and the Colony of Maine were combined with the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The new char charter softened religious tests, tests to hold office and vote, expanding liberty of conscience except to Roman Catholics. From its founding in 1870, Massachusetts had established a Puritan who had all kinds of problems, Congregational Church which was nominally part of the Church of England. Yeah, yeah. Could go off on a whole other video on that alone, but yeah. But see, liberty of conscience, conscience except to Roman Catholics. Hmm. Hmm. Because Roman Catholicism is clearly Satan's church. Now, you're a Catholic. I'm not going to hate you I don't hate you if you're a Catholic. I don't. I, I feel sorry for you. But I hate your religion. I hate what you believe. I hate every false way. You're of the church of the living God. You ought to do that too. You ought to hate every false way. And also while we're in Psalm 119, look at A.N. A.N. Verses 121. On verse 128, I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to mine oppressors. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. My eyes fail for his salvation. When you see these people being duped by Satan, I hate every false way. There's nothing we can do about some of it because we know this is going to happen. But I, I, I hate every false way. That's why, you know, when you run into certain issues or problems, it's like you got to leave these people alone. You follow the Lord. Never mind what so-and-so is doing, okay? You talk to him. You did this, that, and the other thing. Fine. Okay. We're done. Leaving you alone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay? You go on to the next one. Okay? But nonetheless, I'm troubled, I'm stirred by all the heresy that you encounter out there. 
Never mind that you, you, many people are being distracted by in the media and stuff. Never mind that. You just go walk outside your door. These people are living it. Living the distraction. Why? Because of the terrorists among the wheat. Okay? Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy, and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. They have made void thy law. Hmm. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. And I do, brethren. I do. Oh, oh I hate every false way. You hate it because it disagrees with what you think. Uh, this is my standard. Not me, not my opinions, not men. But this is my standard, the scripture. Okay? And if it contradicts scripture, I'm against it. I hate it. Okay? And if I'm in error, the Lord will reveal to me my error through a truly saved, converted brother or sister. Or he himself, in time, spent with him in scripture. It always happens. Okay? I am not my own standard, people. You are not your own standard. Okay? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, that's Satan's temptation. You, you, you are your own God. You get to judge what is good and evil, remember? That was Satan's temptation. So, our Lord does what? Here. Here's what's good and evil. Here, I tell you what is good. I tell you what is evil. It's in here. You want to know what is good and evil? Here, I'll tell you. Here, read the scriptures. This tells you what is good. This tells you what is evil. Okay? And God within you will lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay? And we are to hate every false way, brethren. We are to hate every false way. Okay? And Christianity tells you to love every false way. To learn the ways of the heathen. To intermingle themselves amongst this heresy. Huh? Deuteronomy chapter 18. Skipping ahead here a little bit. Deuteronomy chapter 18. A little bit more on this. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Those out there, it's like, well, Brad, you're against liberty of conscience. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I just hate every false way. And I'm going to tell you about that. Okay? All right? Okay? This is America. Uh, the original intent never allotted for Catholicism, but by the time the 13 states were implemented, Catholicism was already in. America was doomed from the start. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 under verse 14. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you, among you, church of the living God. What they're doing, they don't want to hear the truth, leave them alone. They got their own problems. Okay, these heretics, these devils, they don't want to hear the truth. It's not our job to go, Ch -ch -ch. no, we fight with the sword of the spirit. They don't want to hear it. That's on them. Okay, that's on them. They're going to have to give an account of themselves to God at the great white throne of judgment. Okay, but there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Interesting about familiar spirits, usually within scripture, is always associated with wizards. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Think about that. 
Think about that. Think about these Catholics. They're an abomination unto the Lord. It's not our job to repay his vengeance on them. What does he say in scripture? Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Okay? Some of these heretics, brethren, some of the worst things that we could do as a church of the living God is just as like, hey, okay, leave them alone. Because they've made their choice. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Perfect. Here, in heart. And hate every false way. Brethren, look. It's okay to hate every false way. You don't be a jerk about it. Okay? Like some of them. Okay? You No, know, no. But, you know, when talking like, you know, the one time I was talking with the Muslim individual, I told him flat out, I hate your system. And he kind of took a step back from me when I said that. And he said, well, I hate yours too. I was like, I know. I know. And we left on a cordial note. But see, that was the thing. That was the thing. You know, we had spent time talking with each other. And then he basically round about us like, you really hate what I believe. It's like, yes, I do. And I want to see you get saved. He's like, well, I hate your, I hate your religion because it's from the Jews, my enemy. I know you do. And I'm here to warn you of that. And if you've, if you've ever experienced that, number one, that's pretty um, nerve wracking because my little heart was like, oh boy, you know, it's like, you, you hate what I believe, don't you? Yeah. Have you ever run into that, by the way? Hmm? Have you ever been witnessing to someone like uh, one of these Unitarian people or something like whatever it is? And they come right out and ask you, you hate what I believe. How are you going to answer? I, I, I don't hate. I don't know. Hmm? You hate every false way? I know this is very touchy for a lot of you. I understand that. When you have Catholicism distracting you with, we all are supposed to preach love. Okay? Now that doesn't mean that I cannot coexist within a vicinity with someone of whose religion I hate. Of course, you know, of course not. But do you hate every false way? I sometimes question, I question, I wonder if some of you actually do or not. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God in your heart. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. They can do that. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. Oh. The Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. So, the nations, these people, are doing what they're doing. But the Lord who we belong to, we don't do like they do. And this comes into play within uh, the difference in the dispensations. Like in Deuteronomy chapter 4, you read about how Israel was taken out to be an example of how God is during the dispensation of the law. He was to be their exam, his example onto the nations was Israel during the dispensation of the law. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, the church of the living God is to be the example. And you read about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? The comparisons of the two different dispensations. How it was unto the Jews under the law. And on today, today in this dispensation, it is the church comprised of both Jew and Gentile. See? Okay? Okay? So see, we don't wage war physically. Okay? 
And that doesn't mean, too, that we go out preaching hatred either. No, but we, as the church of the living God, who know our Lord Jesus Christ, who are of his bones, of his flesh, who dwells within us, we are to abhor that which is evil and to cleave to that which is good. You're not going to get away from that. Do you hate every false way? Because every false way that isn't in accordance with Scripture is what? It's of Satan. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 16. Okay? Now, see, here's this thing again. Okay, it's like, well, Brad, you're talking about pre uh, preaching hate. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay? I'm going to tell you the errors of Catholicism. Okay? The satanic heresy of Catholicism. I'm going to tell you the satanic heresy of Mormonism, of Islam. Okay? All right? I'll speak with you. I, I have. We have. Okay? I'll speak with you. Absolutely. But I hate what you believe. I hate Satan. I hate Satan. I hate that which is evil. You ought to too, as the church of the living God, you ought to abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hate. And cleave to that which is good. But see, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9, on to verse 16. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. Okay? A spectacle. Okay? Whereas the Jews in the Old Testament under the law were set aside to be God's example unto the nations, we today in this dispensation, you know, comprised of both Jews and Gentiles, we're the spectacle. Why? Because we don't go along with that. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. Yeah, wait, excuse me. Let's read verse 9 again. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Because we stand for what the truth is. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. How do we bless when we are being reviled? By walking according to truth, by speaking truth, by living truth, by sharing truth. Okay? Being defamed, we entreat. <laughs> we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. We are to have love for others, yes. And we have love for others, how? By sharing truth. Because we love the truth, so we are going to share that truth with others. And what is truth? What is truth? We already looked at it. Jesus Christ, he is the way. The way. Exclusive. Everything else is null and void. The truth and the life. We're to go out and preach things concerning this life with Christ. Okay? And sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? We love others. 
by telling living shooing truth working out what our Lord has put in okay okay and because now go to second Timothy chapter 3 second Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 on to verse 13 but thou hast fully known my doctrine and you're going to know about it okay manner of life okay you 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 they ought to know about the doctrine that you adhere to within the pauline epistles for this dispensation absolutely the doctrine and because of the doctrine manner of life the way we live quietly and peaceably that we may be examples ambassadors okay purpose faith long-suffering charity which is self-sacrifice patience and see because of the doctrine that we have learned of our lord jesus christ and we it starts with that manner of life purpose faith long-suffering charity and patience that's going to result in what persecutions afflictions which came unto me at antioch at iconium at lystra what persecutions i endured but out of them all Lord delivered me. Um, the question you might be asking, do you think Paul hated every false way? Okay. That, okay. Some of you, it's like, that's a serious question. Okay. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth within me. Okay. I am crucified unto the world. Okay crucified unto the world okay do you think paul hated every false way uh yeah but see having concern for these people who are going to go to hell because they have chosen that false way out of love by showing truth is how he walked but yet he hated every false way yeah he did yes he did Yea, and all that will live godly other than that, other than Christianity, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. <laughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And look at us today, brethren. Look at us today. <laughs> look at us today. Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 5. Just really quickly on that. Jeremiah chapter 5. Just two verses in Jeremiah chapter 5. That's it. We're almost done. Jeremiah chapter 5. <laughs> verses 30 on to verse 31. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? They will give you death, and you will love them for. Go to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. I don't hate people. I hate every false way. I hate every false way. And to this very day, my prayer would be if the Lord would grant me one thing, one prayer, that he would answer and do one prayer. The bread. I'm going to grant one prayer for certain. Hang a thousand bucklers on it. My prayer would be for you, my worst enemy, to be saved. Genuinely saved, born again, converted, and become of the church of the living God. Wow, that would be something. That would be something. 
I can only imagine what kind of information you would be able to divulge if that were to ever happen. Is that going to happen? Probably not. But if the Lord came to me and said, actually, that was like that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Save my worst enemy. Acts chapter 17. We're going to be reading from verse 16 on to verse 31. Okay? Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. It's like, wow. Everybody's worshiping idols around here. Wow. Wow. And his spirit was stirred. And did he go out saying, God loves you. God's not mad at you. There are many ways to... No. Let's read. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. I've heard people... These Christians talk about verse 17, about how Paul went and preached love in the synagogues and in the markets to go show the love of Christ. Love of, uh, the love of God, excuse me, is Christ and him crucified. crucified. And it says here, dispute it. Okay? You guys are in a false religion, a false way, and I'm here to tell you. Okay? And here, let me tell you. Okay, if you'll hear, we don't want to hear it. Fine. You know, shake the dust off your feet. Okay, fine. Fine. Hopefully the Lord will give you another chance. If not, <laughs> therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Eupicureans and uh, uh, Epicureans, excuse me, Epicureans, beg your pardon, brother, of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others some. He seemed to be a senator forth of strange little g gods. Hmm, interesting. Because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Okay, verses 19 on verse 21. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? Oh, they were curious. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all Athenians and strangers that were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Kind of like gossiping in a way. To hear some new thing. Oh, did you hear the news? Putin's gone on a warpath. Oh, did you hear the news? So-and-so got something else. or some Did you hear? Did you hear? Hmm. hmm. Hold your place here and go to 2 Kings. Chapter 17. We want to know what these strange new doctrines are. We want to hear this. Okay? Because they, they spent their time and nothing else but to hear and talk of some new thing. There is nothing new under the sun, is there? 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 32 on to verse 41. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord, only with lips, not in heart. Keep that in mind. Because it's like, what it, it says that they feared the Lord. So that, and no, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. Okay? <laughs> All right? So when it says that they feared the Lord, they didn't actually fear him. They were giving lip service to him. Okay? They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations 
whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord. Okay, see, the two references thus far, fear the Lord, is only in lip service, not actuality and heart, having the perfect heart that fears the Lord, okay? They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes, or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment, which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant, and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. There's only one way. Our God is exclusive. If you're worshiping Satan, oh boy, oh boy, you got some problems. You need to take some things into consideration, dear friend. And the statutes, and the judgments, and the ordinances, excuse me, and the law, and the commandment, which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. <clears throat> and the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. But the Lord your God, ye shall fear. And he shall deliver you out of the hands, out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit, they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this very day. See, the Athenians wanted to hear something new. But then again, they were ecumenical in a way. They encompassed everything. Okay, I at one time had that book by that McLaren guy. It's like uh, New Orthodoxy or something like that. How he was an undefined Calvinist, Buddhist, Muslim, something Catholic, Christian. <laughs> okay. So they wanted to hear something new. So they can incorporate the best of new, uh, best of all worlds, I guess. Because, hey, one of these got to be right, right? So let's bind them all together. Because, hey, remember what, the, what did they say for ecumenical sake? We all serve the one God. We all, there's many roads. We all believe in the Trinity. No, we don't. Okay? No, we don't. I don't. Trinity is satanic heresy. Thank you very much. Okay? But it was just a melting pot, a smorgasbord, if you will. Okay? Pick and choose. For all the Athenians... And strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Hmm. Let's continue. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens. Dude, <laughs> ye men of Athens. Okay. I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. If you got a Bible, it says religious, doesn't it? superstitious, not religious. Two different things. Things that are different. They're not the same. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found to I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. That, that verse is very telling to why we looked in 2 Kings chapter 17. Because it tells us in a way that these Athenians took the best of all worlds and brought it all together and called it blah. And that's how they could come up with a devotion with this inscription to the unknown God. Because we want to hear something new. Oh, oh. Whoa, 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 go ahead and whoa, write that down. And it's like, okay, so this guy says this. This guy says, what if we put this all together? Hmm. Hmm. And here comes Paul in the midst of all this idolatry. Like, oi vey, this, this stinking Satan. Ah! 
men of Athens, let, let me talk to you. Okay, let me talk to you. Okay. Verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein. I like how he starts in verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein. Okay. There is no God. You can't prove to me there is a God. No, I can't. He'll do that for you if you're willing to listen. Okay? You're right. I can't prove to you there is a God. He'll prove it to you if you're willing to listen. I can I can tell you about him. But see, it's not my job to convert you. The Lord's the one who does the converting. You, you remember that, right? But I, I like how that starts. Because a lot of people that you run into and who are distracted by the Jesuits... Okay, a lot of people, it's like, well, evolution this and evolution that. It's like, there is no God. I like how he begins his count, his uh, discourse or whatever, whatever you want to call it, with God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Of course, where might Paul be getting that? Oh, Acts chapter 7. Thank you, Lord. I opened right up to it. Acts chapter 7, <laughs> verses 48 on to verse 50. You know, Stephen telling the Jews how it is. Then he rebukes them. Then they kill him. And then that is Israel's official death knell uh, of receiving the gospel. And then that is when in Acts chapter 8, that us Gentiles were officially, even though it was the time of the Gentiles, it had to be exclusively off of the gospel. At first it was the kingdom. Then it was the gospel had to first pre, pre, um, predominantly be offered onto the Jews first. Then they rejected the gospel. It was this dispensation, but they rejected the gospel. So God's like, okay, I'm bringing in these Gentiles. They're going to make you jealous. Are the Jews jealous of what they see today? No, no, no. Are most lost people jealous of what they see today? No, no. Oh, they might want Kenneth Copeland's multi-million dollars. Oh, they want, want, might want to have some of your money that you rub in people's faces that you get so they can pay their bills. But are they jealous of what they see? No, no, not at all. Acts chapter 7, <laughs> Acts chapter 7, verses 48 on to verse 50. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. And this is quoting from Isaiah. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house, and this is from Isaiah chapter 66 too, by the way. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? Okay, go back to Acts chapter 17, verse 25, picking up at. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything. Be careful when you hear these Christians say, well, God needs us. One of the things that uh, early on when I would listen to David Wilkerson, um, he said in one of his sermons, that Jesus needs us to go out there. It's a like, whoa, whoa. God needs us to do, no, he doesn't. He can, he can make stones cry out. He can raise up children uh, to Abraham from stones. God don't need us. Be careful when you hear someone say, well, God needs us. Whoa, well, red flag, run, okay? Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, even to the wicked. He's given you today. You have today by his grace. Okay? You have today. Verse 26. And hath made of one blood all nations. Yes, because we all stem from Adam and Eve. So we all have one blood in that respect. Absolutely. Because remember how this started in verse 24? God that made the world and all things therein. Okay? 
and hath made, verse 26, of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. What is he quoting here? He is quoting Deuteronomy chapter 32. Go there. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 7 on to verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 7 on to verse 9. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Boundaries. And we already read in Deuteronomy chapter 18, okay, according to the number of the children of Israel. Israel was his inheritance. Israel, uh, in the Old Testament, under the law, Israel was the equivalent of us today, the church of the living God. We have not replaced Israel, okay? We have not. But... Israel under the law was to be that example, that ambassador for God onto the nations. Okay? They blew it. Today, in this dispensation, the church, comprised of both Jew and Gentile, is to be that ambassador, that um, example onto the nations. We're blowing it. We are blowing it. Why? When we're distracted. When we're distracted. And look to men. And pay attention to things of men. Okay? See, he's allowed them to do that. But we as his examples, his ambassadors, are to live according to his dictates so that they, that are given over to that because he has not suffered us to do what they do, okay? They see that, they inquire. See? Let's continue in Acts chapter 17. That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of one of your of one of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Okay. Um. Yes. Yes, we are all made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Yes, but we are not all his children. We are not all his children. No. There's a difference there. Okay? For in him we live and move and have our being. You're alive today because the Lord allowed it. Okay? For And also, too, he mentions in verse 28, your own poets. So Paul was conversant, aware of the writings of these people. He was aware of what these people taught. Okay? All right? So he was. He was conversant with their poetry. He knew what they said. He knew what they taught. Okay? Some will say, it's like, well, why do you have the book on that and book on that? Well, you know, number one, I know what my enemy is because the scriptures tell me what to look out for. So then you get a book to see exactly, exactly, precisely what the enemy is teaching. Okay? To be conversant with that kind of stuff. Paul was familiar with their own poets. See? For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, the Godhead, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, okay? The Godhead, okay? We are not, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, or silver, or stone, graven by art and man's device. Make us gods. Like in uh, Deuteronomy, uh, uh, what is it, Exodus 34, you know, making the golden calf. 
And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. You guys had your fun worshiping your little idols. Now Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He died, buried, rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Paid for sin on the cross with his bloodshed. He... Jesus Christ is exclusive. He is the only way. Okay? He is the only way. Now he commandeth all men. At the time of the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. People might not have known back then or whatever, but now the truth is out there. He came. And showed us the way of the truth. He showed us truth himself. He showed unto us the way to the cross. To meet him. Okay. In repentance. Contrition. And in fear of the Lord. He showed us the way. He is the way. The truth. And the life. Okay. He showed us. And he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. See at the times of this ignorance God went at. Okay, you go on, you're, you're worshiping devils. You're not worshiping the true God. But now here, here, Paul, I'm telling you about the true God. Paul being there at Mars Hill amongst the Athenians was God's mercy onto those people because he was his ambassador telling them the truth. And they were involved in every false way. Paul hated it. But see, he showed them love by telling them, in verse 23, him declare I unto you. Hmm. Hey, before you accuse me of preaching hate there, you wicked devils, try to make it through the entire video. Okay? Okay? You will not even be responded to. Okay? Because, and why is all this? Verse 31. Verse 31. <laughs> because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead, they are without excuse. And now let's let's read some of the reaction here. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. Oh, I need to hear more. They just pretty much basically heard everything that they needed to hear. And some who wanted to hear the truth. Well, so Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him, those who were pricked in their heart. Remember those who in Acts chapter 2, they were pricked in the heart and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then in Acts chapter 7, they were cut to the heart and they were like, Get the rocks and storm, you know. So amongst what he said, Others mock, like, ah, you're crazy. It's like, hmm, I got to think on this for a little while. Okay? And all the while, oh, is there something new come up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds really good. I got to think about it. Oh, what was that? What was that? Oh, there's, there's something going on in Russia? Oh, 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 wow. What was that? So-and-so came out with what? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. I got to think about that for a little while. Oh, what happened? Distraction. But see, how be it certain men clave unto him who were pricked. It's like, wow. Wait a minute. Tell us more. <laughs> Come on. Please. Please tell us more. Okay? How be it certain men clave unto him and believed. Among the which was Dionysus, the Aeropagate, 
and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So, we don't know what actual fruit is going to arrive from how the Lord uses us. I mean, we truly do not know. And that kind of ratio, at least some did. And that's, that's always been my personal premise here. So long as just one person, one person, just one, it'll be worth it. Just one. Just one. Let's go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We've talked about this before, but you know, I, I'm just, we got to be reminded of these things, brethren. We have to be reminded of these things. Because it's very easy to get uh, forget sometimes, isn't it? And with all the distractions that Satan throws at people. Titus chapter 3. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men, like we just saw the example in Acts chapter 17. Paul wasn't being a brawler, okay? He hated what they were doing, but he wasn't a brawler, okay? He wasn't a brawler. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. And see right there, verse 2, or verse 3, right there. You used to be like that, Church of the Living God. It was you, it was me, okay? We once were a part of every false way, which we now hate, and rightfully so. But we, see, see, you can't forget from whence you came. You can't forget that you were once one of them. You can't forget that. You can't, rem you can't forget from whence you came. You have to always keep that in memory. You have to remember these things, dear brethren. Okay? Hate every false way. But you show them love like we looked at in Acts chapter 17 by, hey, the unknown God or the God that you think you know, him, let me declare to you, please, let's talk. Let's reason together, you and I, okay? Let's reason together, you and I, all right? Because we always got to remember that one at some point, yes, even you, hotshot, at some point in your life, that was you. That was me. On our way to hell. Without hope and without God in this world. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. His blood shed on the cross. God shall provide himself a lamb, okay? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That being justified by his grace, unmerited favor. I will be gracious unto whom I will be gracious and have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Okay? That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou co affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto men, but avoid, hi, but avoid foolish questions. And what is foolish? To behave as if there is no God. 
and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Leave them alone. They don't want to hear the truth, leave them alone. Go on. Go on someplace. Because every one of us is going to have to give an account of ourselves to God. Where are you going to do it? Brethren, with all these distractions, it's very easy for us to, have our, to take our eyes away from what it ought to be upon. Remember, an enemy has done this, okay? An enemy has done this. And in the midst of all these distractions, as Paul talked about, God who made heaven and earth, it's in him we live and have our being. He gives us life, okay? Like I said, in Acts chapter 17 and verse 24, when he begins his discourse with the people, he begins in that way. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. It's okay to be angry, but don't sin. We know we knew these things were coming. And more on that in another video. We knew these things were coming. Yeah, to actually see it come to pass, yeah, that's that's something. But we knew these things were coming. Be careful. Be ever so careful about what you are allowing yourself to be distracted by. Please, brethren. There's much at stake, and it's a little bit more bigger than you. So be aware of these things and take these things to heart. Okay? Don't be like the mob. Don't be like someone who wants to hear something like a, a new thing. But seek the old paths. When our Lord is like saying, here, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Don't be as the world. That's going to be it for this video. Praise the Lord. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this. If you do, thank you for your prayers. Uh, please pray for one another. We pray for so many of you. Thank you for those of you who still help us, love us, and pray for us. Thank you. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.